So welcome to the Medical Minute. We're going to continue our talk on sodium. And as we look at sodium, the first thing we're going to look at is what is normal, 135 milliequivalents to 145 milliequivalents. Optimal is 135 milliequivalents to 142. So the range is just a little tighter. And the thing that we have to understand about sodium sodium is very tightly regulated in the body. It uses four systems, the kidneys, the renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system, the antidiuretic hormone system, and the atrial natriuretic peptide system. And this is because if sodium gets out of whack, it really starts to affect the cells. It'll affect you at the cellular level. What happens if you have First, we'll talk about sodium that is too low. So that is called hyponatremia. And we see this a lot in people who are endurance athletes. If they don't take electrolytes in with, with what they're drinking, then they burn the electrolytes up. And that's where you see nausea, vomiting, headaches, confusion, muscle weakness, and seizures. Mild symptoms are fatigue and irritability and loss of appetite. Severe symptoms are the brain swelling and coma. And if you go to an Ironman event, I used to actually compete in Ironman. You'll see people right after the event is over and they're in the medical tent and they're all hooked up to IVs getting their electrolytes um, replenished. You know, thank you. Hindsight's a great thing. I can't remember how many times, well, I know how many times, every time after I did an Ironman at about two or three in the morning, I would wake up with the most extreme cramps. It would pull me out of bed and they suck. If I ever do another Ironman, which I doubt, <laughs> I would absolutely go in and do the IVs afterwards. Anyway, back to our, back to our case at hand here. If you have excess or too much sodium, hypernatremia, people get really thirsty. The lethargy comes back into play, mental confusion, muscle twitchings and, and spasms. And then severe symptoms can be seizures and even coma. So you can see why the body regulates this very, very tightly. And if you're having problems with these, you really need to start to look into this and figure out why. So let's take just a moment and look at sources of sodium and quality matters. So people, well, in America, this tends to be a much bigger problem because we eat tons of processed and packaged foods. If you're eating stuff with the little UPC symbol in it, you know, gets the scanning, the barcode, typically those things have high sodium of poor quality. And what I mean is they're basically using table salt, essentially, with added iodine in it, and there are very few micronutrients. And this is not a good source of sodium for you. It doesn't have the other naturally occurring micronutrients and trace minerals to help balance everything out. So good sources of sodium or salt are the salt in vegetables. Sodium is naturally occurring in vegetables, especially things like celery and beets. Sea salt, sea salt, pink salt, and Celtic salt. Those are fabulous forms. They contain no iodine. Now, iodine, we keep harping on iodine because there used to be issues with goiters and problems with the thyroid and stuff like that. But if you're eating lots of vegetables, iodine's found in all kinds of different vegetables. You don't really need to supplement it. It's only when you're eating these foods that have been highly processed. So all of the good stuff, all of the organic stuff, all of the fiber has been taken out of these foods so that they have shelf life. That's not good for you. It's great for the dollar in the bottom line, but for the human being, the animal that is, it's not. So you want to use 
sea salt, pink salt, Celtic salt, and be eating lots of uh, veggies like celery. If you need to add salt to something like a, a chili, throw celery in there and you'll see that it actually adds that salt flavor to it. So there are ways to actually get the good salts in and the electrolytes. One of the number one things with people that are eating keto is they get the keto flu. What is the keto flu? The keto flu has been identified as lacking the electrolytes. And that's why they tell people to drink salt. That's why things like LMNT are there. And uh, I'll just leave it at that. I don't want to go into other forms of electrolytes because generally they all have crap in them. So when we look at the next thing, that's us. And we are here to help you if you are dealing with a problem, if you have high blood pressure, if you're having any of these issues with the things that we've already covered, or you need help deciphering what your blood work says, hit us up. There's our website. There's our email. We're here to help you. Thank you for taking this time to look into the health of you and your loved ones. This broadcast does not constitute a doctor-patient relationship. It is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only and is not a replacement or substitute for care. If you are having issues, please seek a qualified professional trained in functional medicine. We would be happy to be of assistance with both in-person and virtual consultations. Thank you.